What's going on? This is Ryan with Automatic Comics, and up next, I've got about $7,000 in books I'm going to unbox here. I'm also going to expand on one of the keys in here and talk about some potentially undervalued keys that you might want to pick up. And there's a book that is in this one that I'm going to be giving away. So stay tuned for the details on how you can get that book. Alright, so before we get started, please remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. So like I said, I've got about $7,000 in books here. There are some awesome books in here. Very excited for this. And like I also said, there's one book in here that I'm going to expand on. We'll talk about some keys, maybe identify some that might be undervalued. And there is a book that is in this package here that I'm going to be giving away. So I'm actually gonna be opening that one first so you can see what the book is and I can talk about how you can get that book. So let's, uh, let's cut into this one first. Now the reason it's out of the packaging was that it had rained and gotten a little wet and so I wanted to make sure it hadn't gotten on the inside uh, so it's outside of the, uh, the actual packaging itself. But there are, I think, four or five books in here and here yeah five books so there's actually two books in here that you'll have the potential to get uh, so I'm gonna let you choose whoever uh, I pick uh, to choose which one they want all right so the first book here uh, this one you may have seen me show a couple books from this run previously this is a golden age run uh, I just they're, they're so hard to come by books from this run. I thought this was a nice presenting copy. Uh, this is Punch Comics number 10. And this is an example of one where you can see it has a, you can see it, like a printer crease. See that, that's a printer crease on there, right there. And that doesn't impact the grade. And so if you see those, uh, those can actually impact your grade. But a nice presenting copy of this. I think it was graded around a four or five, and I think uh, that sounds sounds right. It, it, it's a nice looking book. So happy to pick this one up. It's not it's not as cool as the Punch 19, where that giant hand was coming down and, and getting those people, or uh, Punch 11, which is the one that has uh, like this like skull skeleton guy on the cover. Um, but uh, but still a cool cover. All right, so. The next book is Blue Beetle, number 51. And so this is a golden age, it's kind of like a good girl art type cover, uh, but it's actually, this would be called more like a bad girl art because it's this, uh, she's kind of like a villain, she's got the gun trying to steal some money, and Blue Beetle is doing the whole Kool-Aid man thing in the back, busting in to try to stop her. Now this run actually has quite a few popular covers uh, from its like, issue 48 to 53, I think. It's a lot of different, these like good girl and bad girl type covers that are very in demand. Uh, this is just, just one of those. And uh, so I thought this was a, a nice looking copy. You can tell it's, you know, it's a pretty clean book. Uh, there's definitely some, there's some spine wear, uh, but it presents really, really well. So nice book for, I, th I think this is late 40s. All right, now the next one, this is one I've shown in a few unboxings as well. This is Batman number 251. And this is one of my favorite Joker covers. It's one of the books that, that really got me into collecting a lot of books. The first time I got a nice copy of this one. And uh, so this is a, it's a nice presenting copy. Uh, there are, there's just some creasing. It's still a, a nice presenting copy of this book and just a, uh, uh, I mean, just a classic Neil Adams Joker cover. It's, I think I have like five copies of this book. <laughs> it's not a, it's, it's one that I, I, whenever I think that it's a, a good price, I, I pick it up. I always, I just, I like buying this book. All right, now these next two are the two that are gonna be part of the, the giveaway that I'm doing. And so the first one is G.I. Joe number 21 which is the first appearance of Storm Shadow. This is also the newsstand edition. And this one, I think, was around like a four or five, but it has 
a lot of things that could be pressed that would make it potentially better. Maybe a 5.5, five, maybe even a 6. Centerfold is detached at the bottom staple, but you can actually get some decent grades with centerfolds that are partially detached or even fully detached. Um, so this is uh, one of the books. Uh, the other thing about this book, if you're not aware, is this is what's called the silent issue because there's no actual words on the interior. The story is all through pictures. So I think that's a, a, just a cool thing about this book. It's a, one of the things that makes this book so popular or in demand. It's that first appearance, but also that really unique storytelling. Now, the second book that you'll have the opportunity to get is Superman number 233. And this is another uh, Neil Adams cover. Uh, this is an homage to... Superman number 11. Uh, that's one where he's on the cover, his Golden Age book, Breaking These Chains. And so this is a Neil Ad Adams uh, homage to that. And so this one is, you know, it's a, it's a little bit lower grade. You can tell it's got a lot of wear and that kind of thing. But again, a, a classic cover. So we've got these two books. And so if you want to get one of those books, you've got to subscribe to the channel. Uh, you've got to leave a comment, leave a like, and in your comment, use hashtag DC or hashtag Marvel. And so I'll do a random drawing of comments later on. And depending on which one you have uh, identified, then that's the book that I'll, I'll be giving away. I'm only giving away one of them. If you have the DC hashtag and your comment gets selected, then I will uh, give you the Superman 233. And if you have the hashtag Marvel, then I will be giving you the G.I. Joe. So those are the, the two books for this giveaway. So remember, like, subscribe, leave a comment, and the hashtag DC or Marvel. All right. Now this next one, okay, this has, I think this one's actually kind of funny based on my last top 10 video. Um, it also has a book that I have been wanting to pick up ever since I first saw it, because I think it's just such a crazy cover. Uh, so there's a, one of these is a Silver Age key, one of these is a, I'll call it a Golden Age key cover. And I picked this up on a, one of the Elite Comics 11 claim sales. Uh, this is from the seller Collector Supreme. And so uh, if you haven't checked out those, those uh, Elite Comic 11 claim sales, I recommend it. They're... They're going on all the time, <laughs> so you can usually find one most uh, most nights of the week. Um, and uh, I've bought a few books from Collector Supreme in the past. I also bought my Suspense Comics 8, I think is I got from them. Um, they have tons of Golden Age, so if you're at all interested in Golden Age, they have other stuff too, but if you're at all interested in Golden Age, and especially like pre-code horror type books, they're a decent place to start because they've got they've got a lot of it for uh, for sale. So, all right, all right. Yeah, that looks nice. And I'll and I'll do a, a check later. But so this first one, the reason I said that this was interesting based on my last top ten video was that this is an Amazing Spider-Man number three, but it's missing an interior page. I believe it's missing the pinup. And that's the same thing that there was that huge sale on Heritage was an Amazing Spider-Man number three in approximately the same grade. I think this one was around a four or four or five is what they had estimated. And so in approximately the same grade, uh, qualified, if it was qualified. But it's a 0.5 if it was blue label and then you go qualified. It could be like a green label four or 4.5. Um, but this one I picked up around the price that I had estimated the book at versus what it had sold for in that top 10. So I was, I was happy to, uh, to pick this one up. I had just recently sold my 2.5 of this book, so I just ended up picking up another one. Um, but yeah, uh, still obviously a very expensive book, even being incomplete, but Doc Ock, you know, one of Spider-Man's biggest villains, it's basically him and Green Goblin. It's probably the, the competition for the, the biggest villains, especially Silver Age. And so cool book to have and a very, very nice presenting copy. Um, so yeah, happy to pick up that. Now this other one, this one's a lower grade. I think it was like a two or something is what they had, they had advertised it as. And this is Vault of Horror number 35. And <laughs> I just, this is, I mean, it's gotta be the best Christmas horror cover. I mean, there's a few of them out there. I know maybe some people have a disagreement or argument, 
but this is a Johnny Craig cover and he did a lot of these EC covers and I mean it's just it's just nuts I mean it's the husband giving his wife a coffin for Christmas <laughs> coming up behind her with this act I mean it's nuts I mean it's these these golden age covers like the ideas they had for this stuff is is crazy and I had ever since I saw a copy of this one I had wanted to pick this up I just think it's it's just a just a crazy cover and I think it's one of the one of the coolest EC covers that, that's out there so I was very happy to be able to, to grab a copy of this one. So that was the two books that I picked up from them. Then, let's see. Okay, this this book, I'll save that one to the end because that, that is a big book. Um, so this one is actually the book that I'll be talking about with the keys. And this is from Superworld Comics. Uh, that's another seller I've, I've mentioned a number of times uh, that they have a Tuesday night claim sale uh, that I often like to watch. Um, so there's a the owner is a, a guy named Ted, and he's just he's very entertaining. He's extremely knowledgeable, and they just have these great claim sales, and they off they have good prices, and I just like watching them. And so. The, the thing you got to know when you when their claim sales is their claim sales are uh, no offers, so it's basically the price is the price, um, but they price things very aggressively, uh, so the, the prices are good, so it's not really anything you generally even need to offer on. Um, but they will do offers if you want to, like if something doesn't sell, you can reach out to them after and you can make offers on books. Uh, it's not like they never do offers, it's just on the live sales. But like I said, this is the book that, that I'll be I'll be talking about keys related to this one. You can see very thick cardboard. Uh, let's see here. And this is a book that I have I've tried to buy it a few times, um, but it just, it always, it never really seems to, to sell high or sell low. It, it kind of holds its value around a certain point pretty well. And I thought this one looked uh, looked pretty decent. I think it's around a five is what it was graded at. And this is Aquaman number one. So what I'm gonna be talking about are Aquaman keys. So keys related to Aquaman because he has become a much more popular character since he's been in the, the DC universe. His movie did very well financially. And so I thought I'd talk about some Aquaman keys. I've never had this book before. It is a pretty ugly cover for whatever reason. DC number ones, just it's like Justice League number one, this, Green Lantern number one. I'm sure there's some others I'm missing. They're just, oh, uh, Flash number one, well, I guess it's not really the one. It's, it's 105, uh, but a lot of them are just, they just, they don't look very good. <laughs> I don't know why, but regardless, it is his first solo series and it's a pretty early Silver Age book. I think this one is 1962. And so pretty early Silver Age book uh, before basically a lot of the, the Marvel stuff. I, um, so happy to pick this one up. The colors look really nice. It's got this, this crease down here. It has some, some spine wear kind of thing, but happy with this uh, happy with this book so I'll be talking about those Aquaman keys in a moment after I unbox this one now this this was a, a this was not a, a cheap book <laughs> I I uh, saw this one come up for sale on uh, another Instagram claim sale and I decided to go for it 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 felt like it felt like a good price for what the book is um, but it still was uh, a lot to claim on a raw book. Um, so, let's see. And especially, you know, that's the other thing, you know, with these, when you're doing these claim sales on there, you can't really see the books very well. And so that's the other risk you take with these, these uh, claim sales on, on Instagram. But yeah, that... It looks pretty nice. Okay, so. All right, gotta get the tape off in front of this. So, 
Let me just take a quick look here. Yeah, it looks attached. It's got a couple tears, that kind of thing. But this is Marvel Mystery Comics number 52. And this cover has basically everything for a a, a, a book from this run. This is an Alex Schomburg cover. He is basically, you know, the number one cover artist from the Golden Age. Then you've got, this is a, a World War II era, I think it's 1944 uh, Nazi cover. So you've got the swastikas on there. You've got the soldiers. You've got this, this uh, hooded figure in the back here with the skull scepter, you know, I mean, with a the, with the swastika on the top of it. And you've got this crazy contraption here. You know, with you've got the, the good girl type bondage cover and they're gonna be smushed by these spikes, which I'm not real sure how, how well that's gonna work because you know it's just like hanging from a chain up there. So I, I doubt the spikes are gonna go into the holes, but you know, it's still gonna get the person, but it just doesn't feel like it has that, you know, that, that real well thought out design. But still, this to me this is this is one of the pretty desirable books from this run. Uh, the, the things that really you, you look for in this run, it's the, the World War II stuff, the, the Nazi stuff, the, you know, good girl art type stuff, and then Human Torch blasting through the wall. That's, I always love those. I think it just looks so awesome where he's melting through the wall and the fact that it is an Alex Schomburg cover. Um, so this one really has everything going for it and very, very happy to, to pick this book up. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll take a closer look at it later ha happy with this book the, the colors just really really pop i mean just a, a very nice looking copy um so yep very happy with that all right so now let's talk about those aquaman keys and what i'm going to do is i'm going to talk about i think seven different books and then i'm going to look at uh, kind of their most common grade or near their most common grade that has had a recent sale and look at their prices a year ago their record prices and their prices today so we can see if there's any that are undervalued right now that might be worthwhile to pick up with the future Aquaman movie coming out and anything else that they're going to be doing with that character. And then at the end of the video, I'll put them all onto a kind of like a figure like I've done in some of my other videos. And then you can see a comparison to look at which ones might be the most undervalued right now that are worthwhile to pick up. Now, the first one I'm going to talk about is Aquaman number one, the book that I had just picked up. And this one is important because it's that first issue. It's that premiere issue, even though they don't have the number one on the cover, which I think is always very strange, but they don't put the number one on the cover for this book. But it's also that first appearance of Quisp, who isn't a major character in any way, but it's basically the same type of character as, uh, what's his name, Mixelplick or Mixelpick, uh, with Batman, who is like a fifth dimensional being that comes in plays tricks on them and sometimes helps them out and all that kind of thing. So the grade I looked at was a 6.0. It's not the most common grade, but it was one that had a more recent sale. Price a year ago was about $750. It peaked on September 13th with a huge sale of $1,395. Now it's more around a price of about $1,050. So it's up 40% from this time last year, down 25% from its high. But I also wanna note that with this book, Prices can fluctuate a lot. Uh, there's definitely not real easy pricing with this book. For example, a 7.0 just had a huge sale for $2,640, and that was double recent sales. So it can jump around a lot, a little difficult to price, but that's where I have this one. All right, now number two is Aquaman number 11. Now, this is the first appearance of Mera. I think this is, this is one of the best keys in this run. Uh, the actress has been very controversial because of everything that was going on with Johnny Depp. Uh, so that maybe hurts the character with their potential in the property moving forward or if they're gonna hire someone else to play that role. But regardless, this is one of the biggest keys in Aquaman. It's also a very, very tough book to get in high grade. It's got so much black on this cover, it just shows every flaw, especially around on those edges. And so tough book to get in high grade. Grade I looked at was a CGC 4.0. Most common grade is a 4.5, but it hadn't had a sale recently, so I looked at the 4.0. The price a year ago was $225. Current price, just $250. And the record from back in 2018, which I believe was when the Aquaman movie came out, was $325. Now, this is a book that has been very flat for many years. 
It's had some growth in the higher grades, but in general, pretty flat pricing on this book. It's up just 11% from this time last year, down 23% from its high. Personally, I think this is a pretty interesting book in terms of books to pick up. It has a great cover. She's on the cover. It's pretty uncommon. There's only 409 graded copies and the character has potential in the DC universe. It's possible they could continue to use that character moving forward. Also, considering how flat this book has really been, it's not a high risk buy. This is a book that you could buy and even if nothing happened, you could probably sell it for about the same price or if you got it at a good price, you could sell it at the higher end of the, the range that it's been in. And so definitely a book that I would say there's very little risk picking up and worthwhile uh, checking out because of the potential with that character being used in the DC universe. All right, now number three, this is Aquaman number 29. Now this is the first appearance of Ocean Master who was the premier villain in the first Aquaman movie. Now it is unlikely that we'll probably see him again or even if we do, it'll be in a really minor role. So I don't think it has a lot of potential moving forward, but it is an Aquaman key nonetheless. The grade I looked at was a CGC 6.0. 6.5 is the most common, but a 6.0 had the most recent sale. Price a year ago, just $200. The record on January 16th, actually, of this year, so just very recently, it was $288. So the current price, I have it at around $250, because that $288 was a pretty big jump. So I've got it around $250, but regardless, this means that this book is really sitting at its high right now. It's up 25% from this time last year. Not really a book I would probably try to pick up at that fair market value. If you could get it cheaper, if, say, there was an auction, one goes cheap, you know, pick it up, but it's not a book that I see having a lot moving forward, but it's also not gonna be a risky book. I think it's like Aquaman 11, like Aquaman 1, relatively flat pricing on this book over many years. All right, now number four, and this is another one I really do like this book as a key in the Aquaman run. This is Aquaman number 35. This is the first appearance of Black Manta. The grade I looked at was a CGC 5.0, which is basically tied for the 6.0 with the most common grade. It's like one book different in terms of the, the census. Now the price a year ago in this grade was $275. The record from 2018, again, when the movie came out, was 465, with the current price being around 375. So it's up 36% from this time last year, down 20% from its high. This is another book that I think is very interesting because They've teased that we're, we're getting that character back, like he's gonna be a returning villain in the next Aquaman movie. And so if that's the case, I could see it getting up to those prices that we saw back in 2018 again, or maybe even surpassing them. And so I think you have some room on that book. And again, like a lot of the other Aquaman books, it's been relatively flat. It's a low risk book to buy. It's a low risk key to buy because you could always sell it again later if you want. Even if you don't make anything on it, you're not losing money on it but you have the potential, at least going into that next movie, if they use that character, to have some type of upward momentum with that book. So definitely a book that I would consider picking up at a good price. All right, now number five, we're gonna move outside of the Aquaman run for this one, and this is showcase number 30. This is actually Aquaman's first solo story, and so like Marvel Spotlight 28 for Moon Knight, this is his first solo story for Aquaman. And I think this is a pretty cool cover, much better than the cover for Aquaman number one. So I think that's something that it really has going for it. The grade I looked at was a CGC 4.0, which was the most recent sale. Price a year ago, about $400. The record was 600 and the current price is just $500. So it's up 25% from this time last year, down 17% from its high, but it's another book that has been really flat since about 2015. So again, not a risky book to buy, but also probably not a book that has a lot of potential moving forward. Since it's kind of a more generalized Aquaman key versus something like Aquaman 35 or Aquaman 11 where it's specific to that character. But regardless of that, it's not a risky book in my mind to pick up. All right, now number six, this is a little bit more obscure. Uh, this is Adventure Comics number 260. And this is actually his first Silver Age appearance. There's some that might say that his first Silver Age appearance is Showcase 30, uh, because this is kind of like a flashback origin story that appears in this one. But it is the first time you see him in the Silver Age. Now the grade that I looked at was a CGC 4.0. It's the most common grade for this book. 
Price a year ago, just $190. The record from 2015 was $350. It also had a $315 sale in May of, of 2021. The current price is about $230, so it's up 21% from this time last year, down 34% from its high. This is one that it looks tempting, but I think the cover really hurts it. You don't have Aquaman on the cover. It's like a Superboy cover, and so not one that I would personally really recommend on the, if you're looking at like a spec type thing, if you're an Aquaman fan, I think it's kind of a, it's a must have book like these other keys for, for Aquaman collectors. But in terms of speculation, I think the other ones are better options. You have some better options here. All right, now the last one, this is number seven. This isn't actually one of the spec books. I just wanted to talk about this book because maybe not everybody is aware of his first appearance. And so this is his golden age first appearance in More Fun Comics number 73. This is also the first appearance of Green Arrow and the first appearance of Speedy. So it is a major golden age key for DC. You've got three characters that are still around today that had their first appearances all in the same book. Again, not on the cover, it's a Dr. Fate cover, but huge golden age key. Their second appearances are one issue later in More Fun 74, which is actually a book that I picked up this year if you've watched one of my uh, unboxing videos. The grade that I looked at, that because I, I wanted to talk about this because there was a huge sale recently. The grade I looked at was a CGC 6.5. There was a sale on January 13th. Now, there was no pricing data for this grade prior to this. This had a huge sale of $192,000 for a 6.5. Now, the reason I say that that was a huge sale is that in April of 2021, a 7.5 sold for $111,000. And in August of 2020, a 5.5 sold for 61,000. So this 6.5 just crushed those sales. Just a massive, massive sale for that book. And it's one of those things that just, it goes to show you, if you just have a couple people that really want a book, they can bid that up. If they've got the money to do it, they can keep bidding that up. And that was a big sale. And that will likely impact future sales of this book uh, in any grade. Now, it is a pretty rare book. There are only 35 universal copies on the census, 59 total when you count restored and conserved books. The rare book only comes up for sale a couple times a year, if that. And so this was just a cool sale to see. Not something I'm saying to, to speculate on, you know, unless you have really deep pockets, <laughs> but, uh, but $192,000 sale for a 6.5. All right, so now I'm gonna put all of those books together on a chart other than the more fun 73, because that's not one that I'm really telling you to, to go out and try to find and try to buy. And I mean, honestly, for Aquaman, a lot of these books look pretty undervalued and, and tempting right now. And this part of this is that it's the curse of, of DC. You know, the, the DC books just don't really seem to move like the Marvel books. But given that Aquaman is becoming a more popular character, there's that potential uh, that those books could move up in the future, and they're also very low risk purchases. They, the prices have just been so consistent for so many years that if you're buying that book, you're gonna be able to sell that book at around the same price regardless. So I've got highlighted the four that I like the most. That's Aquaman number one, number 11, 35, and then Showcase 30. Now, if I had to put them in order, the one that I like the most is Aquaman 11. I just like how rare this book is, how uncommon that book is, and that Mera will likely continue to play a pretty decent sized role in Aquaman. Also the fact that she's more on the hero side of things, and so I generally like investing in heroes, they tend to stick around longer. Then the number two for me would be Aquaman number 35, that is the first appearance of Black Manta, and that one's more of a short term uh, investment though, because I think you could get a spike going into that movie and then it would likely come back down to the same level that it's been at for years. So that's one that if you want to buy the book with a potential of selling that in that upcoming Aquaman movie, that's that's the one that, that I would get there. Then number three is Aquaman number one. Just being that first solo series for Aquaman for a, a pretty big DC character now, just never a bad book to, to pick up regardless of what I feel about the cover. It's a number one and getting those Silver Age, especially early Silver Age number ones, they're always going to be solid investment type books. Even if I don't like Green Lantern number one, the cover for it, I still think it's a solid investment book. Even if I don't like Justice League number one, I, feel, I still think it's a solid investment book. Uh, and so they're just gonna be consistent books over time. And the last one is Showcase number 30. There's, there's a lot of great books in that Showcase run. 
I like this one because it's got a better cover than Aquaman number one, but you'll notice if you go on like eBay, you'll see a ton of these books for sale at any given time. And so there's a lot of them that are just always up for sale. So there's a lot of competition. And so that's generally the, the risk with that book is that I think that's part of what keeps that book really flat. There's just not a ton of demand for that book and there's a lot of them out there. And so that's why that one's the bottom on my list. It does look tempting from the perspective of where it is compared to where it's been and that Aquaman books could continue up moving forward. All right, so those were my undervalued Aquaman keys, some books that you could consider going after if you're wanting to speculate some on the DC universe and what they might do with Aquaman moving forward. Remember, if you want to have the opportunity to uh, get one of these books, make sure to like the video, comment, subscribe, and leave the hashtag Marvel in your comment to uh, get the G.I. Joe 21 and the hashtag DC in your comment for the Superman 233. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. I've got more videos over here if you'd like to watch some of my other videos and the subscription button right here. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, I would really appreciate it and I will see you in the next video.